This episode of Outlander Cast is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com. Okay, you guys feeling like a hot mess express by now? I sure am. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of like all over the place and I can't control many things going on in my life. I can't control my kids. I can't control the news. I can't control the pandemic, but I can control what I wear what makeup I put on my face and what I eat and what time I wake up and if I go for a walk or not. There's there's few things in my life I can control. For any, anyone else out there who suffers from anxiety, these are very important things. And because of that, I want to let you know that MinuteWithMary.com is still running strong. I'm still shipping. I'm still, I'm still doing all the things. We're being very, very safe about it. It's makeup, it's skincare. So if you want to have an in-home spa night or if you want to juice yourself up, if you're doing any video conferencing, I've got you. Search the hashtag Minute with Mary. And for now, the month of April, I've got two specials going on. You can either have the Outlander eyeshadow palette or any eyeshadow palette of your choice at a 15% off discount or my 40 Epic Mascara. That has just been like the blown away champion of pe what people love at MinuteWithMary.com. Mm -hmm. So he said, you know what? Let's, let's keep it in for April as well. You can get either of those products at a 15% discount by going to MinuteWithMary.com slash discount. All the way from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Sing me a song of a last song. Sing that last Mary of soul, she sailed on a day over the sea I shouldn't even do that voice. Don't do that voice ever again. Well, especially with this episode. <laughs> Don't do that voice ever again. Goodness gracious. P.S. Guys, kind of as, we hear, as we hear, as we hear Ray Yarbrough sing ever so tenderly, I got to see her husband Bear McCreary, uh, the composer mm. of of the Outlander score. Um, he just did the cutest little thing. He had his daughter and he create a fort in his like home studio. Mm -hmm. And it was just all so stinking cute. So if you're not following Bear McCurry on online, he's he's a funny guy. And he's also a father and just like the rest of us, is locked up inside. So it's a cute thing to check on out. But of course, we are here today to talk about Outlander and to talk about this gut-wrenching episode. Yes. The Ballad of Roger Mack, um, which show watchers and book readers into show watchers alike are all... Non-stop talking about, um, we are cursing the fact that any sort of tissue product is out of stock right now, because Lord knows we needed the tissues to wasop <laughs> up our tears after this episode and after the, the countless rewatches that you, you probably have had. So for those of you, of course, who don't know myself and Blake, uh, we podcast. We have a studio in Rhode Island. And we love to podcast about shows that inspire us, that bring us joy, uh, that help us connect with people. And we started podcasting several years ago when our little lad was a baby because we didn't know if anybody in the world was going to watch this show called Outlander, mm -hmm. aside from us. And we thought maybe we'll be able to connect with somebody else in this world who watches it. And little did we know that it would take off. The show took off tremendously. We have a thriving and beautifully talented staff from around the world who write for us, who handle our social media, um, who help us plan events. And Blake and myself come to you now twice a week in season, and we podcast about each episode. So this week, we're going to be talking all about episode 507, The Ballad of Roger Mack. And if in the meantime, you are twiddling your thumbs and you're like, I want to you know, rewatch all of Outlander and maybe mm -hmm. you're brand new to Outlander cast. You can see all of our previous episodes um, by going to maryandblake.com. We podcast about a bunch of other shows. You can also check out the slew of great blog posts that our bloggers are bringing it throughout all the stuff we got going on in the world. They are still bringing it every single week. We've got a brand new post up actually all about Murta um, written by our blogger Ann Gavin. Um, so if you're a Murta lover like so many of us are, you're going to want to check that out at Outlandercast. Dot com and for now we're gonna jump on into the show all right all right all right all right my friend 
friend. Tell me anything, anything and everything. <laughs> everything and anything. You know, for for everybody who, who's listening to the podcast, we've been having a lot of technical difficulties with our with our live streaming as of late, and it's really frustrating me to like the nth degree. So just bear with me as I as I power through here. Okay, so the first one, uh, actually, I just wanted to remind you guys that you can go to maryandblake.com and uh, check out all the great podcasts that we have there, including all of our social media. Just look up Mary and Blake, and uh, we will be there. We'll, we'll have some fun with you. We'll chat with you about Outlander and all the other things that we talk about, uh, so go there. All right, Mary, uh, let's release the hounds, and let's talk about the first one on the website comes from Shelly. Shelly says, um, I want to add a comment regarding the song Clementine. What I was real- that song, Shelly? It wasn't Shelly, though. Thank you for the sunshine and the rain. I don't know. Nah, sunny. Sunny. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Not Shelly. She says, I wanted to add a comment regarding the song Clementine. I realize that there might be regional differences in folk song lyrics, but here on the West Coast, we were taught that Clementine referred to the California Daughter? Gold Rush in 1849. What? I learned the lyric that Mary quoted as uh, met a minor 49er and his daughter Clementine. Not had nothing to do with North Carolina. Oh, I do know that version too. Hold on. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling Clementine. Met a minor 49er, which I don't know what that means. Dreadful Uh, sorry. um, Met a minor. Met a minor who was a minor, a 49er, someone who went to California for the gold rush in 1849. That's what 49er refers to. Didn't know that. So, uh, see that part didn't make any sense to me. So I always just remember the North Carolina let's one. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Hold on. Let's see if this works. In a cow. Okay, this is gonna be the California one. I bet. Excavating for. Yeah, this will be the. Met a niner, a forty niner, yeah. and his dog. Never mind. So there you go. There, there's your Clementine. There's a couple of versions of Clementine. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So well, that's what Shelley's saying. That's what Shelley's saying. It is what not it is. Sunny, but Shelley. All right, Linda Hyde says, "Hey, Mary and Blake, thank you so much for giving us this, some joy during this really tough period." Well, you are welcome. You are Linda. welcome, and I am glad to be talking about Outlander right now because I need some joy. We've had some technological difficulties. Oh my God, <laughs> driving me crazy. All right, so episode five five oh seven was a definite five kilts for her. But she can't do the GBG because everything was just so incredible. Uh, And uh, one comment, uh, and that's about the acting in this episode. It just goes to show you what can happen with great writing. Other Outlander writers, please, please, please take notes. The performances by the leading actors were stunning, especially Sam. Agreed. But we should not overlook the outstanding acting by the minor characters either. Mm -hmm. The one that stands out for (laughs) me. Not the 49ers. (laughs) (laughs) The one that stands Get out it, for me minor? is yeah I, I I got it that was that was a lame that was almost that was dad joke level. <laughs> Listen, I am. The I one, thought it was funny. The one that stands out for Linda is uh, Ned Dennehy, who plays Lionel Brown. Ned has instilled in his character a level of meanest and menace that I did not get from reading the book. I think we have all been focusing our attention on Stephen Bonnet and. Rightly so. But we should not overlook the threat that Lionel poses to the Frasers and Claire in particular. Bonnet is a thinker and a planner, whereas Brown is an opportunist. He will impulsively strike when the moment presents itself. And I think that the way they've shown him watching and talking to Claire gives us a clue that we should be watching him closely. Listen, that guy gives me the heebie-jeebies. There's there's so many heebie-jeebies with him. There was a guy who looked like him on the walking path this afternoon, and he was like walking behind me a little bit, and I had to keep looking over my shoulder Mm -hmm. because it freaked me out because I thought it was him, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't. It wasn't. (laughs) But he gives me the heebie-jeebies. Okay, so uh, on Facebook, uh, Hannah Jo Hilliard chimes in. She says, I feel like that the letter is the actual letter that Tryon wrote, the one that he reads. Uh, in the episode, that's the real letter that he's reading. And uh, she remembers it being in the book. And she actually thinks that Diana actually found the exact wording. Now, I don't know if this is 100% true, um, 
But Our friends I on Facebook will know. But I wouldn't be surprised if it were the real deal. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Diana actually did find the letter and did actually incorporate it into the book, number one, and then they took that and incorporated it into the show. That would be a very Diana thing to do. That would be the most Diana thing to do. I would... <laughs> Terry Hughes says, yes, it is the real letter on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It is, in fact, the real letter, which, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't deny. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say uh, no. I, I would actually uh, agree. Uh, what do you got? What's the next one? On Facebook? Yes. All right. Hannah Jill Hilliard writes in, I feel like that letter... Oh, Blake. How to tell when the hosts aren't listening. I asked if I was supposed to be starting the Facebook, and you just said yes. Uh, no, I, s I said the next you one. You didn't color code anything this time. You Goodness. don't color code the comments, you hoop. Goodness gracious, Blake. <laughs> this is like Outlander cast in a whole new level. It's a listener <laughs> feedback episode for sure, right? And I just want to like hold this. Goodness me. Allison Fisher, who is joining us currently on the west coast trying to feed her wee bairns uh right now because it's dinner time over there i saw it in a previous comment she said i wish they had just gone looking for him not found him until next episode give Murta his time he's barely cold before we're off finding roger strung up how do you feel about that blake <sighs> i i actually quite agree i i quite agree um and I'm not saying that it was wrong, but I kind of wanted to just sit with that moment. And I wanted to sit with Myrta dying. And like th they did allow Sam to 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 act that bad boy out. They let that breathe. And I totally I appreciate what they did with Myrta's death because um, it was earned. But then you tack on the thing with Roger, and again, it, it feels so transparent to me that he's not dead, that it's almost like, okay, what are we doing? Like, let's just, don't don't give me the gotcha. Don't give me the aha. And then, but but at the same time, make me have the real genuine feeling that I'm supposed to have for Murta. Would you agree or would you disagree? Well, I feel... I loved this episode. Yes. Obviously, I did. I gave it a five plus. Love, love, love this episode. Now that I've had some time to really like savor it even more, um, yeah, I do think that finding Roger there, uh, you know what it is too. It's because you have a two week break, so it's like dun dun dun. You know, yeah. it, really a true cliffhanger. Um, when we just sobbed our our eyes out about Murta, I do feel like we we were given a lot of time to cry about Murta. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say that because of the way that the Roger stuff played out, you weren't crying about Roger. You cried a little, maybe like Roger continued, but the Murta flow, <laughs> like the Murta flow of tears was so strong that maybe some Roger were sprinkled in there, but like you wouldn't know because there was a flood of Murta tears right. and the Roger tears didn't have their own moment to shine. And that's not to say you can't kill two people in an episode. Mm hmm you can. You certainly can. We've seen it done before, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't. It didn't feel right to to like appreciate and mourn his death the way that I feel like we got to appreciate in in the sad sense. Mm -hmm. um, Murta's death. Uh, Victoria Larkin here says uh, the show. She's just a show watcher. It was such a forced cliffhanger that I feel pretty sure that Roger ain't dead, um, and I kind of agree. You, and and the reason why I kind of agree is actually this really cool thing that the creators did in terms of the writing and then in the directing. Normally, when a character is going to die, they usually have a final goodbye moment. They usually have a final um, a, a heartwarming moment before they go off to battle. Or I think he had that. Uh, and, and they. They absolutely did. Yeah. He absolutely did. Yes. And what I'm saying is, I it was so obvious that that's what they were doing with the longing looks between he and Bree, uh, that at the end of the episode, it was almost like you were prepared for something. Yes. And if they turn that around and make him not dead, um, it's subverting that trope. Like, 
it actually reminds me quite a bit of... Do you remember in the last season of A Game of Thrones? You know nothing, Jon Snow. Remember the night before the big battle of Winterfell? They all sat around the table. Oh, such a great episode. It was, a, was the best episode of that season. Yeah. They sat around the table. They were drinking by the fire. And they were just talking about old times. And they all had these great moments together. And they were all kind of final goodbyes. Mm -hmm. And you expected... All of them to die. Okay, now, like no one died. Now hashtag spoilers. <laughs> hashtag spoilers. No one died. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, there was one death. There was there was one a big major death. death. There was one big death. But for the way that it was played, no one died, and it was kind of like a, a moment where you were like, "What the hell?" So they subverted that on you, and I feel like Outlander is kind of doing the same thing here. All right. Uh, actually, Victoria Larkin actually. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Tammy Lish Spencer chimes in. She says, "All the credit scenes except for the buffalo have now been shown. Will we get new credits now? What do you think about that, Mary? What do you think?" Um... <laughs> How to tell when the hosts aren't listening? No. <laughs> no. How come? We're halfway through the through the episode, through the season. Right, but if you recall, when they moved from uh, France to Scotland, they changed the credits. When they moved from Jamaica to wherever they uh, from, you know, where Scotland to Jamaica, wherever we got new credits. Um, Are we going somewhere? I don't think we're going anywhere, but the story has changed. It's changed from the regulators to uh, a whole new thing. And I feel like that is... Th this the, sh the history of the show has dictated that it likes to change the credits, the song, and all the other stuff. I think there's precedent for it to be changed. So I wouldn't be surprised. But I think... I don't know. I, I'm not 100% I'm not clear on that. I, I'm not 100% clear on that. Um... Oh, actually, you know what? Jackie Harris here on Facebook says um, that there's a tarot card that we haven't seen, and there's also a beach as well. So maybe we won't get a, a credit change. Never mind. Never mind. Um, that's, yeah, no. I think we'll be okay. Uh, Ray Smith says, uh, Blake, you disappoint me so much. LOL, Down the Rabbit Hole is the worst. It's literally the worst episode ever. Why would you want to watch that on Sunday? Because as you guys know, Mary and I are hoping uh, during the break, because there is going to be a break for Outlander uh, this week, we will not be getting a new episode this coming uh, Sunday. Correct. Uh, Mary and I are hoping to do like a live Netflix party type deal where we can all watch the episode, an episode of Outlander together, and we can comment back and forth and have a great chat back and forth. And there is um, uh, an idea of I, I I put forth the idea of doing uh, either. Uh, the Battle Joined, or Down the Rabbit Hole, uh, simply because those are my two favorite episodes from season three. There is a tad bit of controversy over uh, Down the Rabbit Hole, as many people don't like it. And I still don't know why. Blake. I still don't know why. Why won't you just go with like a crowd favorite? You know what? You can have your own Facebook watch party. I It'll feel, probably I, not work. I, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like Netflix watch party. I mean, I feel like the the battle joined is a crowd favorite, but that's just me. That that's just me. Gloria Costa here says she liked the down the rabbit hole. You know what? And that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, but Janine Audi says no, not down the rabbit hole. It's horrible. <laughs> Cindy Reed says, we do not mention down the rabbit hole. Hashtag the one that shall not be named. <laughs> you guys are great. You guys are awesome. Good job. Good job. Um, What else we got, Mary? What's next? <sighs> After Christi Ray Smith. Christine Wilcox. Christine Wilcox says, my outlandish theory. <clears throat> Cue the sound oh, effect. yes. You're right. You're right. Hold on. Where is it? I got to get it. Hold on. Here it is. Christine says something will happen to Claire involving the Browns and her healing. They have been watching her, and I think they're setting something up. The one Brown brother is not 
a fan of Claire. Oh, I like it. When he smashed her syringe. Oh, yeah. First off, that's how that. do you clean that well? Like, do you really have a pipe cleaner that small? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're a big like stainless steel straw household. By well, we, I mean I. Mary. <laughs> Mary is. <laughs> and my kids. Um, so, you know, I've been trying to teach Blake about how you got to clean the straws. You can't just throw them in the dishwasher. Uh, how would Claire clean that syrup? Oh, I guess you could just kind of like pump it out. Kind of like what we do yeah. with the kids' Tylenol. Yeah, just get just some like water. Soapy water. In yeah. Pu- okay. push, it, push it right back but out But nonetheless, again. when that broke... A piece of my soul broke for Claire. Yeah, that was that was not great, Bob. I mean, really, uh, that was not great, Bob. Hold Carrie on. Lynn not great, Bob. Truly. Carrie Lynn Beckin said, if Roger is really dead, I keep thinking Bree is going to be devastated for riding out to tell them about the history of the battle. If she hadn't gone, Jamie wouldn't have sent Roger to the regulator camp. So here's a question for you. Yep. <clears throat> Roger, mm-hmm. if he's dead. Can Bree do something in regards to time travel to fix that? If Roger is dead? If Roger is dead. The show so far has posited that history cannot be changed. His, uh, it, it, I mean, that that's what the show has said. Granted, Claire has brought penicillin to the colonies Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's going to be a widespread thing like trying to stop the battle of culloden or trying to stop the regulator rebellion like that those are huge massive events and to prevent someone from dying is a huge massive event and to be honest i don't want that to happen i don't want the guy i don't want anybody if roger's dead i don't want him all of a sudden to just be alive again. Because they're going to have to show it, right? They're going to... like you, you, Mary, you came up with a great idea the other day, which was they showed him hanging. Well, not him, but a guy with his coat and a bag on his head hanging. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that he is, in fact, dead. Which I know he's not, because he, he can't be. But let's just say, for the sake of, of argument, that he is dead. They're not going to do what they did by showing him just dead hanging. They're going to have to go back and show how that all went down. You can't kill a major character like that off screen. You cannot do it. You you simply cannot do it. We will have Roger's point of view prior to what we got to see um, in the next episode, I believe. I I think you are right. Yeah. So I, I think... They're not going to just go from dead to, like, from nothing to being dead. They're going to have to show it. And if they're going to have to show it, either he's going to be dead and they're going to show it, and they're going to have the emotional impact that you need in in terms of the storytelling itself, or you're going to see that he ain't dead. But to just, let's just say for the sake of argument that he is dead, you're not, you cannot undo that. You yes, can't. you can. No, you can't do that. You, you can't undo that. You, you can't. Why not? If you can travel through time. Because, again, bringing someone back to life is a massive future, event. Future Roger isn't dead. But you can't just take him back. Like, no, no, no. Future Roger is dead, potentially. Not if you go a little before then. If you go to Boston oh, Cream Pie. Now, now you're getting in some serious Back to the Future stuff. I know. And it's going to make your brain hurt. You can't do it's that. It's not for making Like, so you're hurt. saying go back to like 19... Boston Cream Pie Night. Like 19... Yeah, Boston go Cream back, Pie Night. get a little piece of that pie because you know she's been dreaming about it at night so she doesn't d- d- have it so anymore. Potentially, so potentially Brie goes back to Boston Cream Pie Night, sees past Brie... And then past she Roger. She hides from past Bree. Yes. Yeah. No. Roger. <laughs> no. No. He's like, no. Roger, no. No. Please hand me a slice of that pie. And he's like, you just ate one. And she's like, I don't care. No. I've been dreaming about it. No. While I'm here, I'm going to use the toilet. And I'm going to listen to some records. Nope. And by the way, <laughs> don't go anywhere near the elements. Oh, no. You can't do that. You can't. Because you, you, what you're doing is. You, like you're no you you're welcome no you okay let's do. go let's somebody go. somebody here says uh i think superman the movie covered this yes 
Superman the movie did cover this. It's when Superman flew around the world and changed the world spinning and turned back time. Yeah, no, no, we, no, we're not doing that. You could, I could thank the White Claws for, for, for this theory. <laughs> but no, he's not dead. All right, we got an email from Aaron. Bring She's, it on, Aaron. She says, a kilt rating of 4.9. Good. You know how people always gripe that the book is so much better than the movie? I love when a movie or television adaptation can stand on its own, like the Harry Potter movies, The Remains of the Day, or even... Welcome to Jurassic Park. The episode finally put Outlander in the same category for me. The show blew the books out of the water this episode. Blake was 100% right. What an incredibly rich payoff for keeping Myrta alive. The bad. I give it a 4.9 rather than a 5 because of the cliffhanger. Damn them. What a cop-out. And the great. Jamie begging Claire to save Myrta. Remember when Jenny begged Claire to save Ian and how betrayed and angry she felt uh. when Claire wouldn't? For all of Jamie's intelligence, for all he's done to understand Claire, her profession, and the science as she explains it, in that moment, none of that reality existed for Jamie. In that moment, Claire was his white lady, a fairy who could resurrect the dead if only he wished for it passionately uh. enough. And I hope there's some fallout from the exchange next episode. I'd love to see a battle within Jamie between the kid who believed in fairies, to whom his godfather must have been seemed invincible, and the rational man that he's actually become. And as much as I'd hate to see this as a human being, I think it would create some great relational tension for him to have find a way to forgive Claire just as Jenny did, as irrational as that may seem to modern viewers. Um... Yeah, I am in on this. Uh, I am. I am well in on this idea. I think I love the idea of uh, Jamie uh, having to reason out, um, having to reason out this idea of fairies and believing in it, and Claire and helping and trying. I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> what is going on today? Listen, I've got a lot of people texting through our complimentary text service because we had to restart the video. I don't, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> I think I want to move on from this. Okay, comment. fine, fine. So, all right, uh, Aaron, you're right. I like your idea. Okay, let's do the next one. Let's get the let's get the next one from Stephanie, shall we? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie says, before this episode, I tried to fortify myself with a stiff drink and a big piece of pie. As a book reader, I thought I knew what was coming, and I thought I was ready to watch it all hit the fan. Turns out, I was not ready. Jesus H. Tap dancing Christ. Ooh, Stephanie's mixing it up. By the end of this thing, I needed another whiskey, a towel to mop my face, and some electrolytes. This was one of the best episodes in the series, and it comes as no surprise that it was the work of Tony Graffia. That's right. The woman knows how to use the source material to build the tension in the episode all the way through, so that by the end, we're completely wrecked masses of goo, sobbing under our woobies. <laughs> Wobies? <laughs> Wait, hold on, I gotta see. <laughs> so, so, there are wobbies. <laughs> what in God's name is a wobby? <laughs> Stephanie, what is a wobby? <laughs> oh, okay. Continue. <clears throat> what is going on? Dinner fash. What? What is happening? I'm just gonna say book. Show watchers only dinner fash, okay? If you're a little confused right now, just dinner fash. Just just move on. Just carry on. You're confusing me. You're just acting saying, all kinds of weird. Erin, got to have a little emo with me, Erin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I have it. I'm trying to juggle too many things. Too many oh, things. I love man. you, Erin, but we got to have a talk. Uh, <laughs> talk. <laughs> we'll be as Elmo's blanket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh my oh, god. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god, I was picturing boobs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know like when you get cradled in your mother's bosom They're when in you're between crying. Her <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought it was. <laughs> like that. A winner. And I 
was picturing it was like a matronly <laughs> person with soggy, bo- saggy boobs. So they were like, they're not, not boobies, <laughs> they're boobies. I don't know if that was a term. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, do I already have whoobies? Like, are my boobies whoobies by now? They're not perky. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm sweating. This episode's oh. gone to whoobies. Oh, so a whoopee oh is a blankie God, that you blankie. like snuggle under, I guess, that Elmo has. Oh, my goodness So gracious. sorry. I still love you, Erin, and I love you, Stephanie. We're here. We're oh. here. In summary, Stephanie's killed rating is all the kilts. All the freaking kilts. Her good oh. is Sophie Skelton's face at the end of the episode. Girlfriend's got some serious game when it comes to her expressions. And when she looked up at the noose, my stomach dropped. I knew the hanging was coming, and still Sophie absolutely gutted me. Her great was Katrina Balfe when Sam, I mean, when Jamie carried Murta into the tent and demanded she save him. She jerked back from Jamie, not oh. from fear, but as if she was just slapped in the face by the horror in front of her. When she looked at Jamie, we knew what she was feeling, and I started to weep. As she said goodbye to her friend, she reminded us all that Myrta was the one person who'd been with her from the very beginning. I'm going to cry. Be with her from the very (laughs) beginning, making his loss all the more devastating. And her best, Sam effing Hewan. If ever there was a man who woke up in the morning to piss excellence, it's this guy. That is a great quote. Yes. That makes more sense to me than whoopies. Look at this. We do not watch enough Sesame Street. Um, Give him all the awards. No, I piss excellence. I'll tell you that. No. I do. Not today. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Mary. Appreciate you. (laughs) Quarantine's really telling me how you feel about me. Let me tell you. Your tech skills today. Not not great. Not the best. (laughs) Not Not great, Bob. Oh, my God. And for those of you who don't know, the thing that probably makes me the crabbiest is when technology doesn't work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when technology doesn't work, when like my computer freezes and I just keep clicking the button and I go, it doesn't work. It's not working. <laughs> and I'm clicking. It's not working. <laughs> I go to a land of crazy that should not be allowed. So when Blake's technology oh. isn't working... Oh, dear. He feels the wrath. And then I'm like, Mary, just refresh it. You're fine. You're confusing it more. Gotta calm down. Oh my god. That's what she said. Oh my god. <laughs> Jeffrey, get out of here. I Ex- told you, you can't come in the studio. Stop, Jeff. I was wearing that shirt. Yeah, you were wearing the premium woman <laughs> yeah, shirt. Yeah, so sorry. Stephanie says, give Sam all the awards. Everyone else gets off the stage. Thank you and good night. He proved once again that he is not just a pretty face, but an actor with tremendous range and talent. By the time he collapsed in front of the fire, it was completely done. Well past crying, just a heap of snot and tears. If this episode is any indication of what's to come, especially now that Sam and Kat are producers, sign me up. In the meantime, I'm going to get me some more pie. I like the pie oh, what comment. kind of pie? Where's the pie hat? Where's she at? What's she making in quarantine time? Where is the pie hussy? She just was like, she she showed up and then she was gone. I wish she was my neighbor. I'd be like, drop that pie off. I'll wait the three days so it's safe. Does she do key lime pie or is she more of a traditionalist? I would assume more of a traditionalist. I feel like like we would get some cherry pie. I mean, cherries pecan. aren't in season, right? Pecan. They can do a pecan pie. An Are you apple... a pecan person or a pecan person? Pecan. Uh, hold on. Hold on. What's the type of the pie? I don't know. Pecans. A pecan. <laughs> <laughs> you got to use it in context. I think I'm a context. pecan person. Pecans. It's full of pecans. You don't even eat them. I, well, I like you pecan pie. You pick them off. No, you don't. I like pecan Not pie. Not for reals. Sure I do. Tastes like brown sugar. You can't, get, you can't, you can't beat that. Yeah, but you just eat the brown sugar bits. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> You take the goopy stuff in the middle with whipped cream. I'll, I'll take and a you couple. Cover I'll take a couple whip- of pecans in there. Mm. I'll take a couple. I won't take the whole thing, but I'll throw. You know, I'll throw some in there. Okay. Lumos is here. Lumos is back. <laughs> All right. This one comes from Suzanne. She says uh, she gives this one five kilts. Uh, the good was Jamie and Claire. Jamie believing Claire that could save Murtaugh, even though he was dead. I rarely cry at Outlander anymore, and I was bawling this time. There were no bads for this episode, so the great. Jamie dropping the red, co- red coat at Tryon's feet, yes. and effing Graham McTavish. How did they keep that one a secret? And using the lines from the book, as Murtaugh dies, my sweet boy, which is the rough translation from Gaelic, it doesn't hurt 
to die. Then, waiting for the very end to reveal the Roger hanging talk about a cliffhanger, pun intended, and I've read the fracking books. Stay safe and healthy. We listen to your podcast at the hospital. <gasps> Some brightness in these Guys, uncertain times. Yes, Lots Suzanne. of love, Dr. Suzanne. You know what, Suzanne? Just for you, you get this. Makes me want to shout. You make me want to shout, Suzanne. Thank you so much for getting out there and making uh, making the world a better place. We just send Suzanne a shirt. You know what? Just That's a great idea. Suzanne, send us your your address. We're gonna send you a little shirt that you can like change into. Yep. When you're getting out of your hospital garb, Suzanne, you email me again uh, with, from where you emailed me this this message. Let me know your favorite type of pie. I will not make it, but I just want to know. <laughs> just for the fun of it. And uh, what we want, what I want to do is, I want you to go to the Mary and Blake store and pick any one item from the Mary and Blake store, and I will send it to you. So that is that. Email me your home address and let me know you got this message, and you get a free thing. So that is that. Uh, from OutlanderCastClan.com, Mary, what do we got? Maureen writes in, Reese is the best singing voice. He hit those notes perfectly. So glad he got to stay. Oh, thank it's you. Our, it's our little man. I'm also a theater mom. <laughs> not really, but kind of. Mary may or may not have been coaching our son. Not on singing, but I was coaching him on his phone call to the governor's office. <laughs> Do you want to let everyone know what I coached him to say? Uh, go Absolutely. Go right ahead. Okay. So the governor of Rhode Island put on a press conference today targeted towards children. Um, and she said, if you want to submit any questions, please feel free. You can. So I coached my six-year-old son <laughs> to ask <laughs> how they were going to be graded and how they were going to make sure that it was fair since some families have working parents and some families don't have the same technology. To which Blake said, Mary, you're such a Gryffindor. You're trying to make sure that grading is fair during a pandemic. <laughs> and I... You're a wizard, Harry. I'm like, I want it to be fair. Oh. I just want it to be fair for kids who, like, are at home with a nanny from, like, Care.com right now who don't get to do all this stuff. So, nonetheless, my son did a fantastic job. Okay. He read the whole thing. With Mary is teaching him the in, the, the intonation. Because he was, he was reading it to like, hi, governor, I'm Reese, and I'm six. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you got to say it like it's a conversation. So, he did a great job. I'm Reese. I'm Reese, and I'm six. How's it going to be fair? How's it going to be fair? Because some kids... <laughs> His question was not asked <laughs> live on television. No, I wonder why. There were 13,000 questions, and his did not make it. <sighs> All right. This one comes from Lynn Henderson. She says, the best episode ever. She even spelled it right. E-V-A-H. Eva. I give it five kilts. All the feels. The good was the return of Graham McTavish as yes. Buck McKenzie. I would agree. At the first, I thought my eyes were deceiving me. What a great treat. The better was Jamie in the red coat. Oh, man. And when he took that coat off, if looks could kill, Sam just brought it in his I episode. wish he just had his like j his ginormous pecs like, pop it off. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> then he had his dad's coat reappear. <laughs> <laughs> like a quick change. <laughs> That'd be great. Like somebody came over with the coat and put it on. <laughs> yeah. And then that somebody made sound effects. <laughs> Uh, the better. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the great was Murta and Roger. Oh, I knew Murta was going to die, but I was not expecting it in this episode. And as a reader, I knew how the episode would end, and therefore I wasn't expecting Murta to die in the same episode. In fact, I was worried that doing so would give the short shrift to both uh, the Roger and Murta stories. But they managed to hit a powerful one-two punch that left me speechless. This is Outlander at its best the only bad here is now that we have to wait two weeks to see what happens next. Stars, you are killing us. Uh, I'd agree. Uh, I like how I actually kind of like how they're just letting us sit with this death and that not knowing of the Roger whole thing, even though I hate the cliffhanger aspect of it. But I like the emotional being stuck in it. Um, and then I, <sighs> yeah, I'm in on it. I'm in. I think I think I like it. Uh, Mary, are you ready for the uh, voicemails? Sure am. All right, let's do it. Hey, 
Spotlight. My name is Sarah, and I'm calling from Moore, Oklahoma, or better known as Tornado Alley. Ooh. Hey, Sarah. I'm a first-time caller, and after last night's episode, I had to call in. My my journey with Outlander started whenever I realized after about nine months that I had been paying for stars through the Amazon Prime, and I knew I needed to get some money's worth, so I chose Outlander and started it, and my gosh, did I binge that Yay! so fast. <laughs> My good from last night's episode was seeing Roger step up to take Murda the message mm -hmm. that he would lose that battle. I also loved seeing Murda and Roger and their relationship. I forgot how much they cared for each other. My bad was seeing Jamie in that red coat. You could almost feel the ice going through his veins yep. and his butthole clenching up because he looked just so <laughs> uncomfortable. And my great was seeing Jamie care for Murda the way he did and toss him over his shoulder as he went out for help. You could see the desperation of him wishing Claire could bring him back to life, but that was a no-go and all of our hearts broke. I don't think that they killed off Roger just yet, or at least this is wishful thinking. I think someone took his white flag and hoped to wave it to save their own skin. Ooh. So hopefully Roger's still out there. I give this episode a five kilt rating. It's obvious. It's so great. It's the best one in a while. Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Thanks, Sarah. Welcome to the family. I like this idea that somebody took the coat and thereby the white flag, and they were trying to wave the white flag uh, in in a way to like say, I surrender, don't kill me, and then they get killed anyway. I kind of like that idea, but I think it'd be better if it is, in fact, Roger that's hanging and he's not quite dead. I think that's the best way to go about it. Like Princess Bride? Yes. <laughs> Anybody want to peel it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do the next one. Mary and Blake, hi, it's Marsha from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, Marcia. I'm talking about the Ballad of Roger Mack. I give this episode five gazillion kilts. <laughs> it was all the feels. Agreed. So starting off with my good, Graham McTavish returns and i was so thrilled to hear that melodic baritone oh so cool mm. to see him again mm -hmm. um my great was all the sexy time boy this episode had a lot of it um you know it started off a little weird um i'm sorry this whole um obsession that jamie has with his wee jamie now i mean what's up with that is that what happens when you turn 50 and you're a man um, it still works and Yay. then claire's singing happy Look at it. It works. Him, like marilyn monroe when you know she's she's on the hobby horse come on um but my best sam hewan's performance oh, was no. bar none um i just thought it was so awesome you could you could feel his anguish when he put that red coat on and how his character's posture changed so viscerally. Oh, and then that scene with Murtaugh, so heart-wrenching. Um, and just you felt that pain along with the character. Excellent, excellent job. So guess we'll talk in two weeks. And I look forward to talking to you then. Bye for now. Bye, Masha. Thank you so much for uh, for doing it. I think he does... I think he's just happy that Wee Jamie works. <laughs> and you know what? That's okay. Claire does not have whoobies. No, she does not have whoobies. They're, she is whoobie less. Yep. She's still boobies. She, she's still boobie. <laughs> Hi, this is Ashley from Louisiana. Hi, I give Ashley. this episode a kilt rating of a big five. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved everything. My good was following up with Morag and reminding us of the time travel aspect. Yeah. I always love when the series revisits and reveals things from the past. My great was Jamie smarting off to Governor Tryon after Alamance. He reminded me so much of Claire whenever she forgets her place in this time. Jamie knows the future and he's reacting to what's happened at the battle and he's taking it out on Tryon. The way Claire has reacted so many times because of injustices of this time period. My best was Jamie's reaction to Murtaugh's death. We haven't seen Jamie really lose it very yep. much. He usually keeps it together and he's pretty unwavering. But this was so raw and devastating and it really showed. Thanks so much, Mary Blake, for helping keep me sane during this weird time. Mm. I always look forward to your podcast. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad that you were able uh, to help you out and uh, 
you know, somebody said this a couple of weeks ago, and it's something that I really believe in. Um, and it's not to pat us on the back because we don't deserve to be patted on the back, but it's just like for for that particular person, we were the 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 port in in a heavy storm, the calm port in a heavy storm, and and it's just nice to hear that. And it's nice to know that at least for one person, we are that for them. And I totally picture us being though those like kind of like not so well put together, like Gloucester kind of port. You know what I oh, mean? Like a little yeah. scrappy, a yeah, scrappy look- port. <laughs> you know where it's like, what's for dinner? I don't know. Leftovers. Like, <laughs> Lefto- come on in. Why, why don't you go out to the, to the shore? We'll give you some shelter. Go, go get the bucket. You, you'll see what's for dinner. You're gonna have to bunk with Bertha, <laughs> but we got you. We got you. <laughs> You know what I mean? We got the lobster with one claw. That's the one that we got. <laughs> what do they call those again? The, well, they put them in the ding and dent section. The ding and dent. <laughs> For those of you who don't live in New England, that's where you get your cheap lobsters. You oh, go to the yeah. ding and dent bin. You go to the ding and dent bin. You get like you get They're like, like the 20 island pounds of, misfit of lobster toys. for like 25 bucks. You can't beat it. It's the best. And sometimes you get a lobster with just one claw. Sometimes you get a lobster with like a massive claw. We should be having lobster during this. The fishermen are still fishing. That sounds like a Can great idea. Can we have idea. lobster be... dinner for Fancy Friday? Absolutely. freaking lulu There we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So All we're right. glad that we can be a scrappy pot. A, a scrappy pot with <laughs> with no real love uh, mooring. You know, it's just it's just kind of floating on the water. That's what we have for I you. No, it's like you know the perfect storm, like the bar that they're <laughs> yeah, all yeah. in. Oh, that's yeah. what I picture when people. When the yeah. when the person said that, when the listener said that, that's what I picture. Yeah, we're the lady behind the bus serving the drinks, yeah. and they're like, she's like ripping butts, and she's like, "Come on, what do you want? Fine, you want a cause? We don't have cause. We got gansets. That's all we got." <laughs> all right, let's do the next one. Hi, this is Katie from Sacramento, California. Hi, Katie. My kilt rating for this episode is four point eight. I loved it. My good Roger. I feel when he steps away from Bree is when Roger really shines. He was believable throughout this episode, and I cheered when he punched William Buckley. Roger needed a moment like that. Mm -hmm. My bad is I think the season has suffered by not having Jamie's decision to muster a militia and cooperate with Triumph be met with more opposition. I wanted someone, whether it be Claire, Roger, Murta, or even Jamie himself, to call into question how Jamie can support a crown he has fought against his whole life. Britain is a villain in Outlander, and to watch Jamie trade land for his family and his honor has been a hard pill to swallow. Mm. Even though every episode mentions his ambivalence, he should have been tortured by his decision. I feel like the whole first half of the season missed a chance to create real and believable drama. My great When Jamie put on his red coat and stood in formation with it on, wow, it was a perfect representation of how out of sync he is with his own character and morality. He soon reaps the ultimate consequence of his decisions with Murta's death, and I think this was Sam Hewen's best acting in the whole entire series. I got all the feels. I look forward to the rest of the season and hope it is epic. Oh, looks oh, like you got caught up. You were right there, so you we know, know what you're saying. Katie, I appreciate you, and this is what you're getting. Bam! Just like that. A winner! You call back anytime. That was You're bringing the heat Her with that, Her voice was so tranquil. It kind of reminded me of the, the sleep stories that I listened to on the Calm app. Oh, yes. Highly recommend that. If any of you like to like fall asleep to a story that sounds like Katie speaking... <laughs> About like lavender fields, which I know uh, lavender is a sore subject for us to listen to. And, yes. But anyway, Calm App, huge fan. Katie, your voice is melodically beautiful. Oh, look at you bringing out the nerd stuff. I mean, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Thanks. Nerd! Melodically beautiful. Oh, I thought you were referring to the fact that I listened to a meditation app to fall asleep. <laughs> that's nerdy. <laughs> well, that's nerdy too. <laughs> You know These what? are tough times, Blake. <laughs> tough, tough times. times. Well, hello from the Highlands of Scotland. Hey, hey Kirsten's here. here. Giving you my take on the episode. The good. Graham McTavish's cameo. Just proud to see him play back. It gave a whole new dimension to the character. And didn't he play him perfectly as a sleek at Bampot? Especially loved the phrase, curry into like a Coleman Raj. Scots slang hasn't changed. The bad. Hard to find fault in such an exceptional episode, but it ripped my knitting that Claire was so glaikit she only brought one syringe through the stones. Yes! Really, lass? 
couple of things made me smile. The militia's 18th century A-team fighting style, where for a few seconds nobody was killed, and Tryon's scene where he says, their course is set, so is mine. Mm. Did anyone else get a... The great, yes. everything Sam acted, each second on screen, he was breathtaking. Easy to see why he said it was his favourite episode. Jamie losing Murta, his rock, his tether to Scotland was very raw. As Murta said, Dinna be afraid, it does not hurt to die, oh. but it does to go on living. That's all from me. Cheerio. Uh, Kirsten, safe. this is why you are a Hall of Fame caller. You, you, you're going to multiple levels here. You're doing multiple references all at once. And just for you, just for you. Here comes the General Washington. Thank you for bringing Hamilton into this, into this podcast. I'd love to find a way mm. to bring in Hamilton every single day episode but people would get annoyed so thank you Kristen Kristen for doing it that was excellent great hey, just job. so you know people on Facebook are saying they use the calm app as well yeah, you're all nerds <laughs> no and Amy Garcia uh, uh likes ASMR hashtag all the tingles I gotta say oh I think I uh, think you are sensitive to ASMR since you do that hi. no this is the one that we saw oh, with them eating weird the food e- <laughs> <laughs> like candied strawberries. We're watching some lady eat candied strawberries for like Mary's like, this is so cool. I didn't say that. I said this is crazy that this is what people do. But then again, we podcast about a TV show. <laughs> people record themselves eating food. Oh, it's weird. Alright, let's get the next one. <laughs> Hi, Mary and Blake. It's Sharon calling from Chicago. Hey, Sharon. First off, your little guy is adorable. Oh, and he can you. sing so well. <laughs> thank you. Um, that was lovely to hear. Thanks. Um, I'm going to give this episode a five, just like Mary. Finally, what I've been saying all year. <laughs> Roger sacrifices himself for others. And boy, didn't they show how good he is and what a sweetheart he yeah. is. So i um, looking forward to hearing more about his character arc. All right, so I finally agree with Blake about the regulator thing. As you know, I've not been a fan. I was so worried they were going to fumble that storyline. I needed to have... Sharon, welcome to the dark side. Welcome. Have more faith. Hooray, Tony. Thank you, thank you. I was ready for Murtaugh to die all season, so it didn't hit me as hard. Jamie's reaction is what got me, Um, especially when he was by the campfire all by himself. Oh, Mm -hmm. Sam is such a good actor. Um, My good was Claire and Jamie in bed. That's the couple we all know and love. It was funny and heartfelt. You know, and there were so many layers to this episode. I think I could talk about it for a solid hour and not draw a breath. Um, I think I just agree with all of you guys about what was good. Uh, the red coat thing with Jamie was just heartbreaking and all the acting right in his face. Yes. You could just see it. He didn't even mm-hmm. have to say anything. Yep. I could just feel that coat burning on his shoulders. Thanks, guys. You're Thank wonderful. You. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Sharon. I appreciate that. Good job. Hi there, it's Amy from Dallas giving this week's episode a 4.9 kilts. All right. I want to say thank you. I look forward to your podcast so much that I've stuck with Outlander even though I've been less enthused with seasons four and five. The episode this week really reminded me of why I loved Outlander in the first place and I feel very optimistic for the back half of the season. I love how this episode revealed the consequences of so many choices and actions our hero Jamie has made over years, the obvious ones being instructing the boy not to hesitate, and how essentially selling himself out to try on snowballed and culminated into such a tragedy. But there are actions that go further back. His gruff disapproving of Roger, I think, is part of why Roger stepped up and delivered the message. Jamie prays to his war chief Dougal, whom he betrayed and murdered. I think Dougal's spirit worked against Jamie. While Jamie didn't lose in battle, he lost in what really mattered. Mm. Additionally, Dougal's son appears out of nowhere and harms Roger. Coincidence? The most upsetting is that despite everything they've been through, Jamie is trying to change history again by preventing Murtaugh from fighting. Had Jamie not been looking for Murtaugh, had Jamie not hesitated, Murtaugh wouldn't have come out to save him and then wouldn't have been shot. 
Myrtle falls into Jamie's arms just like Blackjack did at Culloden. In the end, the man Jamie loves most in the world died a violent death no better than his greatest enemy. Oh. Only this time, Jamie was the one in the red coat. Oh. Thanks, guys. Can't wait to hear more next week. Bye. Amy. Amy. Makes me want to shout. Excellent. That's all I'm going to say. Excellent. 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 You. That was freaking awesome where's amy from because she said she's from dallas but she doesn't sound like she's from texas well maybe she maybe she ain't from texas maybe she just lives in maybe she just lives in dallas i know you know i don't know could be but i don't know if people in dallas have accents well you ever hear jerry jones talk who's jerry jones owner of the cowboys no oh that man's got an accent so do you got a worse accent than i do (laughs) (laughs) hey mary and blake this is Carrie calling from Mascuda, Illinois. Hi, Carrie. I'm a longtime listener, a sometimes email commenter, okay. and a first time caller. I must tell you guys, I love your podcast. Thank Thanks you. for all you do. Oh, thanks. My kilt rating for this week's episode is a five. I thought it was just perfect. It was awesome. I don't usually give a five, so but this one was really worth it. My good for this week was Claire and Jamie's pre-war connection. Mm. Their conversation, their interactions, their intimacy. The good luck soldier yes. scene. It was just fantastic. Yes. I loved it. My better was Jamie's redcoat scenes. The before the battle when uh, he try and forced him to take it and wear it. And the after when he threw it down at his feet after he realized it wasn't worth it. And my best was Myrta's death scenes. There were so many tears, so many feelings. The connection between Jamie and Myrta, their interaction, and then um, just the way Jamie reacted Yes. With Claire um, and and all his sadness and oh. anger and angst. It was fantastic. It was. Um, I uh, wondered if you noticed after Myrta's death and all the way to the end of the show that Jamie had Myrta's blood on his hands. It was a little detail that I noticed, and I thought it was really poignant that they had that that way all the way to the end of the mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. Well, again, thanks for all you do. Um, hope you're doing well. Take care. Thank and, you. And uh, I'll listen to you next time. Bye. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I did notice that detail. It's something that I wish we had actually brought up uh, in the uh, in the original podcast. Uh, but thank you for calling it out here. That's excellent. Yes. Right, let's get the next one. Hey, friends. It's Janine from Pennsylvania. Hey, Janine. Oh, my lanta. Did this roller coaster ride just pick up? Oh, you know that meme house. from the Simpsons where the kid's on the bus saying, I'm in danger. <laughs> well, that was me the whole, par- <laughs> oh, the whole episode. Um, I did love the parallels between this battle and the Battle of Press and Pans. The music, the fog, the shaky yes. camera angle, yep. all an- echoed it. The only thing that made this one more epic was you had no idea who the clear enemy was. Mm. Now it's time for Janine's random thoughts. Um, the opening scene where someone's writing the Ballad of Roger Mack, was that from Days of Future Past? Mm. Or is that foreshadowing a Back to the Future moment? Mm. I loved how Claire pulled a Marilyn Monroe on Jamie with her own rendition of Happy Birthday, Mr. President. Mm-hmm. And why did Jamie's cut have to be so big on his hand? I'm Seriously. just here thinking, Jamie, you're getting blood all over your clothes. Seriously. Say I if you're now hoping that Brianna's riding coat gets added to the Outlander collection hot topic. Hmm? Anyone? <laughs> I. When, when Tryon says, fire on them or fire on me, you know that some of them were waiting, wanted to raise their hands and say, wait, is that an option? <laughs> and then there was the heart-wrenching moment where Murtaugh says, don't worry, it doesn't hurt a bit to die. You could see it written on Jamie's face, but it does hurt to go on living without the dead. Mm. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. <laughs> Until the next one, stay sexy, don't get corona. Thank you, Janine. Oh, I'm always sexy. I'm always sexy. Always. That's what she said. <laughs> Stop it, Je- Jeffrey. Get out. Out. I told you, you can't get in here anymore. Where's the god? The god. The god's doing a bad job. Lumos. The yeah. guard. <laughs> L- Lumos the cat doing a bad job. Jeffrey's sneaking in here. I don't like it. All right, let's do the next one. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Lisa from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Ooh. Greetings. Hello. Uh, Hello. First of all, I wanted to say I really enjoy listening to you guys. I've been watching Outlander now for a little while on Netflix, but mm-hmm. this season is the first season that I'm able to listen and watch together with you Yay. guys. So, really Excellent. cool. Um, about the episode, I don't have a GBG per se, because I think you guys already mentioned so many things, and I totally agree, but I want to open a topic. Have you guys noticed that there's not much love between Brie and Jamie? 
I've been looking oh. at them now for a few episodes thinking, come on, dance together on the wedding yes. or give each other a hug when going uh, away. Or even this episode with Myrta dying and Bree walking away and later Bree standing there on the edge watching for Roger, Jamie walking up to her and nothing. There was no hug. There oh. was no consoling. I wonder why Outlander is doing this. Do you guys have a opinion about this? Thank you. Mary, what's your take? You know, um, it's funny because in the show, I've just seen that as their relationship, like mm -hmm. as who they are. Mm -hmm. I don't see Jamie as being like a big hugger of people aside from Claire. Like he's obviously very PDA with Claire. They're always touching each other. Um, so I just see it more as a thing of, that this is their personality types, that they're not really warm, fuzzy, huggy people. And yep. I see Brie kind of the same way as Jamie. Mm -hmm. So I I don't think I found it odd as I just saw it as this is their personalities in the show. Sure. Because I'm not like particularly huggy with my family. No, you're not. Even when like things are tough and sad. You're not even really particularly huggy, huggy with me. Yeah, I'm just not like a huggy person. And what I suspect is Jamie and Bree are still feeling each other out. Like, you got to consider the fact that, like, these two, they haven't been Have together. Have you found it weird? Because maybe I haven't because that's kind of how I am. No, I mean, I haven't found it weird. The way that I just interpreted it was that they're still figuring each other out. They still, like, like she's only been around for, like, a year and a half or two at most. And it's like okay, this is my dad, but he's not my dad because my dad was Frank and he's dead. And like, and maybe because I didn't have like the huggy closeness with her as a young person. Now she's a grown woman. She's a right, mother. Right. Um, he, he's the father, but he ain't dad. I said that actually back in the um, down the rabbit hole episode. Jamie's the father, but he ain't daddy. And uh, I think that's a big deal. All right, let's get the last one in. Hello, this is Lauren from North Carolina. Hi, Lauren. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thanks, Lauren. And my kilt rating for this episode was a fiver. As a book lover and show watcher, I was so happy that much of the battle and dialogue was faithfully portrayed, mm. especially the birthday scene. I have bullied my husband into watching the show. He's not Claire's biggest fan, but he admitted <laughs> that this episode was pretty good, which made me say, just you wait. As for my GBG, my good would have to be Roger's storyline. I love book Roger, and his scenes were so good in this episode. And I admit that even though I knew it was coming, his final scene left me with as much anxiety and heartbreak as it did while reading it. And to get Graham back as Dougal and Galus' son so was good. such a great Easter egg treat. Yep. I don't really have a bad, except maybe the battle scene seemed a bit choppy. I recently visited Alamance Battlefield since it's so close to my home to get amped for this episode. Mm. I recommend following the site's Facebook page as they were hoping for an uptick in visitors, but the virus has affected this as it has everywhere else. Mm. My great, although it's really not great, Murtaugh's death. As we all know, this didn't happen in the books, but it played as if it did. Dare I not say it could have? Between Jamie's anguish, Murtaugh's final words, and Claire's look of despair, I was wiping away tears, which I haven't done in a while while watching an episode. All in all, a great episode of Outlander, and I'm looking forward to the Grandfather Mountain Games here in North Carolina this summer to continue what my husband calls my Outlander obsession, hmm. as long as the coronavirus hasn't also canceled that. Thanks, and stay safe. Thank you, thank you very, thank you very much, Lauren. I really appreciate that, Marvin. That is the end of all the uh, the voicemails. Got any closing takes? Ah, uh, because we we didn't do opening takes today, so we got to do closing takes. Uh, you can go first. All right, my my closing take is this, and actually, Lauren brings it up. Um, the the battle scene. As much as I love this episode, if I really had to go and analyze it, I I think the battle scene was only competent. I think it was only uh, decent in terms of how it was directed. Uh, I think there was a lot of awkward use of slow-mo. Um, and it felt like it was put in... Uh, it wasn't designed to be slow-mo. I felt like it was put in in like you know post-production. And, you know, it, I mean, it is what it is. I, like, there was just... It was very... It was just very plain... And I just wish we had a little bit more. There was that one effect where we had like the guy running next to the tree and he gets blown up. He gets blown away from the tree. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. 
And like, that's about it. And it's, I don't want it to be flashy or anything. Like it was competently done. I knew the geography. I knew where we were standing. I knew which direction that we were going, but it just wasn't, it didn't blow my doors off. I just thought it was a mediocre, like it, like I think back to Preston pans and it, that too was shot like in, in a, in a way that was interesting, but what they did was really cool. How they did it with all the fog and everything that was awesome. That was that was a very interesting choice. I wish they had done something similar. Like even the Battle of Culloden, they made a really interesting choice, hype like heightening all of the different colors mm-hmm. and then making the really cool choice of having the whole battlefield dead yeah. and the only people that are alive left are Jamie and and, and <sighs> Black Jack Randall. Yes. Like obviously we know that's a heightened reality. We know that that didn't really happen. Yeah. But it was a really cool choice. Mm-hmm. Uh Outlander has has not shied away from these choices, so I wish they had made a choice like that. Uh, all right, closing take. I've given you enough time. What do you got? I'm having a tough time that we're having a two week, <laughs> two week <laughs> wait. I'm not gonna lie, um, but I am loving a lot of these conversations. Um, I do. Th- I'm. I'm just. I'm really, really excited for this back half of this season. This episode, by far, reinvigorated so much fire in a lot of the Outlander fandom that I did feel like was starting to dampen out a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I do fear that some people who have not been able to fully be on the Roger train uh, may have missed out on some Roger just sweetness. Mm -hmm. But all I could tell you is that he's... (laughs) He was a sweet, sweet man. <laughs> um, so we're just going to have to hold on tight together and and wait this out and do some rewatches during the two-week hiatus and then come on back April 5th, right? Yep. No. Uh, no, not April 5th. It's the following week, so April yeah. 12th. Never mind. So uh, Easter. Uh, Easter, yes. Easter day. Uh, all right. Uh, you ready to do the uh, the trailer for the next episode? Yes. All right, let's so, do it. So warning for those of you who don't like the trailers, we're going to watch the trailer. All right, hold on. I'm bringing it up Oh, here. look at that face that Claire has. Oh, my goodness. Can I win not husband and wife? Oh. Doesn't make the pain any less. Governor Tryon has granted you 5,000 acres in the back country. Why? Perhaps he thinks he can buy you forgiveness. I don't need land. I need my husband back. Marsley! Have you prescribed anyone some water hemlock? No. Why? It's just that some missing. There's only one root left. Jim, Jamie, and go to the cabin. No. <gasps> Oh, oh, oh. Okay, hold on. I want to go back go to... Go back to the beginning. He thinks no, he hold on. Buy you for- I don't need land. I need my husband back. All right. Okay. Time out in the background here. Yep. That's Roger. That's Roger. You don't think that could be Fergus? Nope. That ain't... Oh. That's a possibility. To me, that looks more like Fergus. That's a possibility, but that looks like Roger to me. And you want... Like... I feel like they're or bonnet, definitely not bonnet. No way. To me, it looks Fergusy. I feel like it's Fergus ish. Um, can't see the other hand. <laughs> you'd be able to know if it, see. He's not really frontier chic right now. That's the problem. He's just got a coat, and that looks like Roger to me. I'm telling you, that's Roger. Guy's alive. Who else are we missing? Um. There's a chance it, it's not Jamie because he's too. No, that's not too, Jamie. He's too slight. Um, it could it could be Fergus, but it, it just doesn't have that feel. Maybe someone who loves to patrol Pinterest. Another one. I was just gonna say it could be Lord John. It like there's a there's. I mean, a wedding season might be wrapping up. His <laughs> calendar may be open. Um, could be Lord John. Um. But it feels like Roger. I don't know. All right, let's go back to the beginning again. My ten I were not husband and wife. Just to make the pain any less. That's right, Jake. Governor Tryon has granted you five thousand acres in the back country. All right, time out. For, look at look at Jamie's eyes. He's like, um, what? I don't know how to share this news with you right now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that was good. Joe Casta. Oh, Joe Casta. You know she's she's deep down hurting. She's deep down. That that woman has gone through a lot of pain, man. A lot of pain. Losing all them husbands, losing her kid, now losing Murta. 
losing her eyes. Like, she's got a lot of stuff going on. So much. Lots of pain. Okay, here we go. Why? Perhaps he thinks he can buy you forgiveness. I don't need land. I need my husband back. Marsley! Have you prescribed anyone some water hemlock? No. Okay, so... What's going on here, Blake? Looks like somebody wants to get poisoned. You know, you know what I... <laughs> the first thing I thought about... What's that? <laughs> It's in Harry Potter when they're running low on uh, gillyweed. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Time out. You're a wizard, Harry. And Snape's like, Potter. And? Nerd! <laughs> Have you been trying to make? Oh, um, <laughs> no. He was he was running low on all the stuff that he needed for because uh, Mad-Eye Mooney, you know, to, to the potions. But Snape was blaming it all on Potter. Yep. Have yep. you been making cup? You know, have you been going into the potions <laughs> pantry? All right, Look at Marcy, she's like, no. What, what are you I... talking about? I didn't do anything. All right, that's that's a face. Why? It's just that some missing. Is anyone root left? Take Jamie and go to the cabin. No. <gasps> what okay. is coming out of that woods? All right, something is coming out of the woods. Can't be a bear because they've already done the bear thing. Can't be a wolf because they've already done the wolf thing. So it's got to be an animal of some sort. It ain't a person. I don't think it's a person because because Jamie wouldn't have done that knowing it was a person. Uh, it's got to be an animal of some sort. And I wonder what that's going to cause. And like, you know what that kind of gives me like a feeling of? Do you remember 24 when they ran out of stuff for Kim Kim Bauer, the Jack Bauer's ba- daughter yeah. to do? Yeah. And they were like, OK, what are we going to have her do? And <laughs> they. She, they had her walking in the woods, and a mountain oh, lion showed up. Yeah. And, but nothing ever happened. It was just a mountain lion. <laughs> Not great. That's what I feel like is going to happen here. So I, I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Don't know. But we might get a mountain lion syndrome on, on this one. That is, uh, that, I don't know. That's just me. What do I know? I don't know. I don't, I don't know too much. Um, I right, just have to else? stay so quiet. I just have to, like... Look away, stay quiet about things in this <laughs> trailer, as do all book readers. Oh my god! All right, um, ready to close out this bad boy? Yes, I am. You got anything else for this? No, but just know that even though we're going to be having a little hiatus, Blake and I will still be doing some fun things this upcoming week. Yes. Oh, and if you do want to vote on what we should watch. Maybe we'll put up a poll. On Netflix. On Netflix. We'll put up a poll on on in the clan. How's that sound? We'll put up a poll and uh, we'll we'll give you some options. And you would you need to have a Netflix subscription. Yes. And I think do you have to access it through a laptop or desktop? You can't do it on a device. Is no, that what you figured out? You should out? be able to, uh you should be able to We're do gonna it on figure a this out. We're trying it out tonight or tomorrow night on how we can do this Netflix watch party. Okay. I have the hiccups. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. That means you've been drinking. <laughs> Not really. All right. Let's do it. In a cave. Blake. We're, we're playing it again. Blake. We have We have to close out to this song. Fine. We have to. I mean, I wouldn't choose this version. Well, I mean, I, I, I found the first version I saw on YouTube. This is not a great version. It's not bad. I, I mean, mean, it's not great. Nah. See, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's not like me singing it. All right, so everybody, go to MarionBlake.com. Check out all of the podcasts that we have there. Go to OutlanderCast.com and uh, check out uh, the podcast and all the blogs that we have there from all the fantastic writers that we have going on. If you want to be an official member of the OutlanderCast clan, just go to OutlanderCastClan.com and you can be an official member there and get access to all of the um, all of the great things that we have going on over there, including the After Doc Show, which is what we will be doing right after this since we promised it. Uh, last episode and uh, so if you guys who are watching live at this very moment if you want to go to outlandercastclan.com to watch us please do so 
Uh, and uh, that's it. That's all I got. We want to thank all of the members of the Outlander cast staff for cranking out the content, no matter where they are in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Once again, we have incredible blog posts up right now. You can head on over to outlandercast.com to check those on out. We also want to thank our patrons from outlandercastclan.com. You yourself listening right now can join outlandercastclan.com for as little as $2 a month. It really goes towards the production of this website, of this podcast. It keeps it going, especially in times like this. Um, If you are supporting local small businesses, hopefully you'll think of us as a local business even if we are far away you can find out more at outlander <laughs> We're a small business. we are a small business and so we appreciate any and all support especially during times like these outlandercastclan.com is a place to go to learn more and we want to especially thank our most generous patrons angie candy carolyn celine christine dawn diane jeffrey jennifer karen marilyn maureen siobhan stephanie valerie as well as our co-producers Amanda, Ann Lee, Barbara, Dana, Janet, Keelan, Lori Ellen, Marianne, Meredith, Raynal, Sharon, Tina, and Whitney, and last but certainly not least, our executive producers, Ann, Bobby, D, Jen, Katie, Kirsty, Martha, Nadra, Peg, and Sarah. That, and, and Gavin chimes in here. She says that there's a great post on the blog about Murta. That's right, because Anne wrote it, and I want you to go read it, because yes. it is we amazing. We talked about it earlier in this episode, but seriously, if you are a Murta lover, you have to go check it out. Yep. Like, no joke, head on over to outlandercast.com. And thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping us company, everybody. We truly appreciate it. We will be back with some more fun stuff during the, the hiatus. Hopefully. We will, no matter we will. what. Yeah. Yep. Remember, <laughs> so we're going to put up a poll in the Outlandercast clan. Uh, on Facebook, uh, the group, and we'll give you some choices, and you can choose from that poll. And whatever wins in that poll will be the one that we watch on Sunday. And then maybe we'll do it. It needs to be seasons one through three. Uh, it has to be seasons one through three since it has to be on Netflix. So that's that. All right, let's go. Thanks, guys. Let's go where? No, that's it. That's the end. That's the end oh. of the podcast. <laughs> so we're going to have to move Lumos here. A- everybody on Facebook. Uh, thank you very much for putting up with all of Oh my gosh, we had so much technical difficulties. Yeah, that was and not children great. And that was that was that was not great. There was a lot of things going on today, right. so I apologize. So uh, for those of you who want to watch the After the Doc show, head on head on over to outlandicastclan.com. If you become a member, I believe it is a clansman level member. And above. And yeah. above, you are able to watch we'll be the After Dark show in seven live. minutes. Seven minutes. I'm going to go get a snack. Because it, it's it's a tradition on the After Dark show. We have to eat and drink at the same time and and, and talk and have fun. So Love you guys so much. Outlandercastclan.com is where we're going to be for the After Dark. No? Um, Outlandercastclan.com? Yes, that's yeah. where we're going to be. Yeah. Outlandercastclan.com. <laughs> All, right. All right. Much love, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye. guys. Thank you.